Well, Oklahoma's Manufacturers Alliance is an industry group that offers technical assistance and business advice, helping companies become progressively more successful. Earlier, I visited with the group's president, Roy Peters. So, Dr. Peters, is Pelco a good example of where manufacturing jobs are going in Oklahoma? Oh, they're a great example. Uh, that's a great company. It has uh, terrific uh, leadership, um, uh, wonderful employees, as I'm sure you uh, observed. And uh, <clears throat> I think one of the hallmarks of a good manufacturer these days is a company that recognizes that it needs to change and it needs to improve and it needs to find new products to uh, take to the marketplace, needs to uh, be in uh, uh, business worldwide, not just uh, domestically. And if you kind of think back at uh, what you saw at uh, Pelco, uh, those are traits that uh, are very evident in that company. Now, every time I walk into a facility like that, I'm always struck that it's nothing like what I think the uh, typical idea of what manufacturing is about. It doesn't even look like it. That's right. It's, uh, it's a wonderful place to work. And uh, they, by the way, have a sister uh, plant in Claremore that makes uh, huge utility poles. Uh, think about cell tower uh, poles, as an example, or transmission line poles. And it's just as well led. Mm -hmm. And, and, and just a good facility. Let's talk a little bit about the industry in general. We saw a, a loss of about 2 million jobs during the recession, though we've seen a steady increase this past oh, several months. Uh, how are we doing? Well, it's been tough <clears throat> uh, on everybody. Uh, uh, almost nobody escaped this time. Um, the, uh, in Oklahoma, the job loss uh, went from about 153,000 manufacturing workers down to about 123,000. It's back up to about 126,000 uh, today. Uh, hiring has been very, very slow, very deliberate. Uh, people didn't like having to lay people off, and these are their friends and sometimes even their family. So uh, what we're seeing is, um, are the signs of hiring, which in our world uh, equate to, first of all, a lot of overtime hours. Uh, the Employment Security Commission puts out a monthly report on hours worked per week, and we're now up above uh, 40 hours a week, 41, 42 hours a week, and that's very encouraging. Uh, you can only work overtime so long, and then people get tired, and uh, and they want, you know, they're making money, and I want to spend a little bit of it and go to the lake and, uh, you know, have a little bit of fun. So, uh, so uh, stage two then is, uh, and we're, we're in this now, is some temporary worker uh, hiring, uh, going through temporary employment uh, ag agencies. And that's not the most efficient way to manufacture. It'll get you by, but it's not the most efficient because largely those folks are not as well trained as you would train your uh, more permanent employees. And then uh, thirdly, we'll see, uh, uh, we'll see some uh, uh, hiring. Interesting, though, uh, productivity is way up. And uh, uh, we did, in that layoff uh, cycle, we did lose some non-productive people, people that we just had to hire in order to have, uh, so to speak, a warm body. And so now we're left with our most productive uh, uh, workers, and uh, we've just gotten better at making things in America than uh, we were five years ago even. So if productivity is up, and in many places profits are up, it would seem like job growth is soon to follow? That should be soon to follow. That's exactly right. You're tracking right. Something you mentioned, and you're talking about how much it's changed. Let's talk about the new generation of manufacturing. Well, uh, jobs are going to go to, to China for sure. Manufacturing work is going to go to China and India and the lower cost uh, uh, countries. Some of that, by the way, will come back. We saw that in the uh, 90s with uh, Mexico, and we, we're seeing some of that work uh, come back. Uh, the, the work that goes overseas, though, uh, is largely in the commodity area, things that are relatively easy to manufacture, they're not uh, sophisticated and high tech. And so as we've talked to our manufacturing client about their future, we talk about their ability to innovate, uh, bring new products into the marketplace that uh, uh, give them a, a cutting edge. Uh, we talk to them about uh, green and sustainability uh, manufacturing. Uh, we certainly talk to them about their, uh, their workforce, both their incumbent workforce and their future workforce, and continuing to invest in that workforce and uh, bring uh, employee level uh, skills uh, significantly up. 
And we talk to them, of course, about the global marketplace, and uh, that's, uh, that's terribly important. So as we look right now at the companies that are beginning to do well, the company that has the kind of leadership like Pelco that really is hustling. They're really working hard on their business. And uh, we went through an, uh, an era in the uh, earlier part of this uh, decade where they were working so hard they didn't have time to think about their business. They were thinking about producing things. But they need now to, they have had an opportunity now to step back and say, well, let's think str strategically about where we are and where we're going. So could this next generation manufacturer like you're talking about, could that lead to an increase in U.S. exports? Oh, I think absolutely. I think we'll be very, very uh, competitive in the international uh, marketplace with this next generation manufacturer. Okay. Give us your best advice for that young entrepreneur, or maybe that young person just out of school. Well, I think manufacturing is going to be a great, uh, great future. Uh, it, a person coming out of school going into manufacturing is um, uh, going to have to realize and recognize that they're never going to be finished learning. Uh, they're going to have to get smarter and smarter and smarter. Uh, we use that uh, language, by the way, when we talk about uh, a company that has gone through a lean transformation. Uh, you may see substantial, it may be even dramatic improvement in a company because they have gone through lean, but they, they never get there. Uh, there's always an opportunity to get leaner and to get leaner and to get leaner. And that's that's the only way they're going to be able to compete in this market. Well, certainly an interesting world we live in. Dr. Peters, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Rob.